Hello, this is Raziel Cohen with ndftraining.com, and today we're going to be looking at the brand new Holosun PID Plus. This video is brought to you by ammokitty.com. If you're looking for magazines, ammunition, optics, or accessories, head over to ammokitty.com to find some great discounts there. Also, starting this Thursday will be site-wide sales for Black Friday, so go check out the amazing pricings that they offer. Now this optic is extremely new to the market. To my understanding, I haven't seen anyone who's made a video on it yet. In fact, when I went today on the website to do a little bit more research and get more information on this optic, I didn't even see it listed on Holson's website. So this is definitely extremely new and it seems like not yet fully distributed to regular retailers. So I'm definitely very excited to be able to show you guys this early on. Now what this is, is Holson's take on a flashlight into the market. Now Holson has been very innovative when it came to different products in the market. They've competed with very big name brands and in some cases actually won my favoritism in regards to others. So they definitely have done a good job. Now they're trying to kind of expand their market even more and get more serious into flashlights. Now they do have a flashlight already available on the market, but they've been really trying to hit that a little bit more hard to, um, to really kind of offer something new. So they came out with the Holosun PID and then they also came out with the Holosun PID Plus, which is this one. Now, to my understanding, the biggest difference between the PID and the PID Plus is the fact that the PID Plus has a laser um, added to the to the system. So I'm going to be comparing this to two other popular flashlights, one which I absolutely dis dislike, but it's still available and has some components that I think are worth comparing to this, uh, to this flashlight, um, as well as other ones that are extremely popular to kind of give you an idea of where this might fall. Now, I might be somewhat critical when it comes to this particular flashlight because Holosun has entered a very aggressive battleground when it came to flashlights. Right now, there's a very serious uh, serious competitors out there in regards to what they're able to offer. So the question is, will the light output, will the candela output, will the cost, will the durability live up to the branding uh, in, in comparison to other, uh, other offerings that are currently available on the market? So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the tabletop. We're going to be able to take a closer look at this, compare the size to other offerings that are available right now, maybe give you a different feel for how the design was, show you some of the features, and maybe give you a better insight insight into what this flashlight is and if it's something that you should consider for your everyday carry use. Okay, so we are now at the tabletop and we're going to be taking a look uh, at this a little closer in to get an idea of the value you're getting out of this. So there's definitely a lot, a lot to speak about here. So this is the Streamlight TLR1 HL. It is a very, very popular flashlight known for like the very basic toggle switches on both sides. Uh, and this is something I've been using for, for quite a long time. This actually ends up, this is the older version. So this is, I believe the 800 lumen uh, option as opposed to what they now have is the 1000. Then we have the Holosun flashlight and then there is the um, Olight uh, PL Valkyrie. Uh, PL Pro Valkyrie, which again, I, I don't think this is a great option ever. However, it is uh, comparable to this optic, uh, this flashlight, for the reasons of it having a rechargeable system. So I want to kind of compare that um, across. Then over here, just as an additional comparison, this is the Streamlight that has the green laser uh, addition to it as well. So since this is a laser and light unit, I thought that would be fair to also bring this uh, like bring this into the picture to kind of give you a better idea of what, what options are available. So let's go through some of the specs of the of the Holosun flashlight so you get a better idea of like a baseline. So this one is 800 lumens. This one is coming in at 900 lumens with 20,000 candela, um, which again, for what's available on the market, that's not mind blowing, uh, but that's still kind of like neutral. It's not, not incredible, but it's pretty good. And then it has the ambidextrous controls. Now the ambidextrous controls are very unique because there are two sets of controls. There is the top and then there is the bottom. The top, when pressed, activates the light and then the bottom when pressed activates the laser and it's able to be done on both sides. Now something I'm going to show you guys when I when I kind of have some b-roll going up over there is that I've had a weird issue with the activation of the light. So what the way it works is that a single tap is going to keep the light on. By the way that flickering is not visible to me on, on my end but I, I noticed that on the camera. But when you press it and let go it should be able to stay on, constant on, and when you hold it and let go it should be able to go off. So there's kind of like a moment there that you have to hold it and then let go. So for momentary use, that's the way it works. I generally don't like that. I'm generally more of like, I want to know that when I'm tapping it, it's just going on and off and that's pretty much it. I don't like the pause, wait and think to see if it's going to go off again, but that's what it, that's what it comes on on. Um, so when you press it, what I'll, what I'll show you that, you that I noticed is that there's a delay from the time that you let go until the time that the light actually turns off. So 
I'm gonna use my voice so you just get it. I have an idea. So I'm holding, 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 let go. Holding, 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 let go. You may or may not notice that on camera, but I'll try to get a different angle for you, that when I let go, there is a moment where it's still activated uh, before it goes off. So it's kind of like a weird mind trip because you're expecting it to not be there anymore, but it's still there for a moment. Um, and it might be just something to get used to. Then on the bottom again, there is the laser activation, which goes by the same function where you hold it, let go. And if you see, you might've seen that actually a little bit better. I'm gonna hold it and I'll tell you, hold, 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 let go. And it was still there for a little moment after. So again, I'm not sure what the deal with that is, but that's the way it works. Single tap, it keeps it on. And then again, it's able to be activated from either side of, of the pistol. Now over here, you're gonna see these two um, two little uh, spots over there. This the charging attach attachments where it comes with this cord that you're able to use and it clicks right over there. Now, it's a very, very, very um, small magnetic click. So you really wanna make sure that whatever surface you're putting it on, it stays there uh, because it's very easy to be able to accidentally pop off. Um, I don't think I had an issue in regards to that little wiggle of it deactivating, but um, that's, that's the way the uh, charging port works. The battery is a rechargeable lithium 18350 battery. And again, it's rechargeable through that single magnetic uh, charging port. And it's also IPX, uh, IP68 waterproof. So again, for what's comparable on the market right now, um, it's not particularly incredible, but what I wanna go for also is, did they design a flashlight that has to have its own proprietary holsters and other things, meaning it's not gonna be in line with anything else available because of the way that they designed it. So Streamlight has their laser on the bottom. So you can see that here's the light and here's the laser that is going to be on the bottom. And then for the standard light, you can see that it's just one standard light. Here, they made it as one full unit, right? but the laser is going to be inside the actual, inside the lens of the, of the flashlight. So when I turn on the laser, so the laser is now on, you can see how it's protruding right out of there and the light is right over there. So I hit the flashlight, there's a flashlight and then there's the laser below it. So um, it makes it for one unit, but what I did notice is that I'll take the flashlight, the stream light off over here. The size difference, if I level it right over there, you can see that it does protrude further back. So the stream light is a little bit shorter than this one, which again is already uh, pretty big. So if you have maybe, perhaps, if you have like these Surefire flashlights, it may or may not be compatible with, with that setup, I don't know. Um, but that's just be something to be aware of, where if you have a Streamlight TLR1HL, to my understanding, it will not be holster compatible uh, because of the length being a little bit longer. So your trigger might be a little bit more exposed. Something I also want to point out is in regards to mounting. So the mounting right over there, there's a screw that you are able to undo. And again, being <laughs> completely blunt and honest, I cannot, after installing this, for the life of me, remove this flashlight. Now I'm going to obviously figure it out, but usually you're able to just kind of press, like on the streamlight, you'll see that this bar over here, it moves off to the right to make it easier to be able to remove. And if I press that over here, it did have that feature when I was putting it on, but for some reason now, as I'm trying to take it off, it is not, it is not being able to be removed. So I'm not exactly sure what the deal is with that. I'm going to try to pry it off in some case, but again, as of right now, it's, it's literally stuck. So I'm not, I'm not sure what the deal is. So that's going to be about mounting. So with the mounting, it comes with two different switches. There is going to be this size, and then there's going to be the size that's currently mounted. Now, what was weird, um, which I might th think is worth pointing out, is that this Glock, which was my primary use Glock, I had some stippling and some work done to it, and I was not able to have this fit. No matter which attachment which I used, no matter which configuration I put it, it was not able to see. Now, even when I use this gun, which is completely stock, this is a training gun, it's not a real gun, but it's an exact replica of a Glock 19. Um, when I was able to put it in, you might even see some of the, the wear that was right over there. I had to really, really get it stuffed in to be able to make it, make sure that it actually fits. So uh, I'm not sure what the deal is with, the, with compatibility, but it was a little bit difficult to actually install. Now for something like um, the, the Olight, what I want to show as, as a comparison, so this one uses that magnetic attachment right over there for, for recharging and Olight's is an entire bottom. I think in regards to use, this would actually be better. Um, but again, I'm not saying this is a good light. I'm saying that the magnet that it's being used and the system that's being used here feels more secure than what that is. Uh, but I would hope that over time, that we're gonna see that this is going to function better, which is obviously way more important. Now, in regards to putting on and, and taking off, the easiest and easiest, no question, to be able to put on and take off is the Olight locking system. It is a very simple, very straightforward system. Second to that would be the streamlights twist on and twist off, which I really like. It's not, it doesn't require any tools and I like the fact that it's toolless. Um, and then lastly would come this one, which 
I, 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 I can't take it off right now. So I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but this was also the more, most difficult to be able to, to put on. But again, realistically, if it's going to be a duty gun, it's not gonna be something that matters that much um, because it's going to be something that stays on. Now, I'm not saying it shouldn't be able to come off, um, but what I am saying is that generally you're going to keep it on and it doesn't really matter in regards to ease of taking it on and off unless you like switching between multiple guns. Now, you could see over here on the left side and on the bottom is going to be the adjustments for the laser to be able to adjust it. And then over here, which also shows to be something that's pretty nice, is it's all tight fit. We'll unscrew that right over here and we'll be able to have access to the to the actual battery so i would imagine which it shows to be the case if you end up having an issue with this individual battery um, or something goes off you can replace it so it's not a built-in battery similar to the the olight which is over here where if this is gone it's gone like you have to buy a new one this one if there's something wrong with the battery you should be able to replace it no problem and then you can continue using the light which i think is a very positive thing so just kind of as an overview for this light the light is pretty low so meaning for me to be able to press the buttons with my thumb i have to really get to the back to be able to activate it, you can't really do it all, you can't do it to the side. I'm pushing the side right now and you're not able to activate it. You have to go further back, that's the, the furthest back I could go. So you kind of have to do it at a back angle versus if I attach this again, when I'm pressing this, since it's kind of a toggle, it makes it much more easy to activate. But also, stream lights are known to be easier to accidentally activate when you're not intentionally trying to do so. So pros and cons of each. Um, however, I would want there to be a little bit easier to be able to access the switches, uh, but again, it's pretty low for what I'm trying to do. And then the laser again is even lower than that, um, which is a whole separate discussion if you should have a laser on your defensive use guns. So I know this is kind of a lot of information, but I kind of wanted to give you guys an overview on this light. I still haven't had enough time to test yet. It's literally brand new, but I kind of wanted to give you guys an overview of what this product offers. So in regards to this being something potentially working in the future, uh, in all honesty, I find it, it's going to be a very, very rough competition because you're coming into a market that's already very aggressive and other lights that already have a lot of really great features. I'm gonna put up the price difference between this one and this one on the screen so you guys can get an idea of what they're currently going for. On um, the Streamlight again, already, this is the older version coming in at 800 lumens. They already have a 1000 lumen version. Um, so it's just something that you wanna be able to take into account if you're deciding which flashlight you wanna get. So ultimately, I'll hope I'll be able to do more testing with this and get a better feel for it and i'll try to give you guys feedback as that goes along this is raziel cohen with ndftraining.com thank you for watching